True Gay Crime contains coarse language, adult themes, and content that is violent and disturbing. If at any time you feel you need help, please refer to the toll-free crisis lines in the show notes. Welcome to the very first episode of True Gay Crime, Just the Tip. True Gay Crime, in half the time. Today we cover the murder of a controversial, outspoken Latino artist, Kevin Frett. A true anomaly in Urbano music, Kevin Frett is best known for flaunting queer pride in underground trap anthems like Soy Asi, I'm Like This, and on Mike Duran's song Diferente, Different. The emerging singer and LGBT advocate was heralded across social media for defying societal norms in both his gender presentation and his taunting lyrics. He was a Puerto Rican rapper, singer, and first openly gay Latin trap artist. Kevin Frett was born June 11th, 1994, came out of the closet at 18 years old, but it wasn't easy. His strict religious upbringing pushed the rebel in him to revolt against his parents, who couldn't accept his homosexuality. He stirred the pot, telling them that being gay was in fact a choice and that he was choosing it. This is a story that he stuck to and caused, of course, a lot of controversy in the LGBT community and with scientists who know that that's not true. Uh, FYI, just so you know, Latin trap music, it's similar to mainstream trap with songs about life on la calle, the street, and the lyrics in Latin trap are often about street life, violence, drugs, sex, all the good stuff. Latin trap, like hip-hop and reggaeton, are full of misogynistic and homophobic lyrics. So here comes Fret with his gender-bending looks and a face full of makeup, here to change the game and show these macho fuckers how it's done. On social media, Fret encourages LGBT artists to follow their musical and artistic dreams while also advocating against bullying. So, to get the ball rolling, Fret goes on singing competition shows. One is called La Banda which is the band. It's a Spanish language competition created by Ricky Martin and Simon Cow. Ricky Martin is so... This guy, he like... He's a fine wine. He's just getting better with age. And now he's got like a husband and kids and it's just too much. I can't handle it. Um, <clears throat> anyway, created by Ricky Martin and Simon Cow. He also goes on Solo Tu Voz, which is only your voice. On April 7th, 2018, Fret releases his breakthrough single, Soy Asi, which is I'm Like This, and he gets featured in Mike Duran's song Diferente, as we mentioned before. Both of these are huge hits. Soy Asi quickly racks up more than half a million views on YouTube, and in the video, Fret wears sparkly oversized shades, super gloss lips, and a glittery crop top. You have to know, if you've ever seen a music video for a trap artist or a reggaeton artist or any type of music like that. It's so misogynistic, macho. Um, the fact that Fret is doing that type of music and painting his nails and wearing glitter belly tops and a face full of makeup is just so flies in the face of everything this music is about it's really, if you don't have a point of reference, go on YouTube and watch the videos and you'll see. And I encourage you to watch his music videos, uh, Soya C, on YouTube as well. Um, he's vocal about his liposuction and buttocks augmentation and says he wants to show off his stomach in his debut video, which he really, really does. Fred says, quote, I had everything in my mind like the day I came out in Latin Trap as a gay guy. As if he has to come out. Like, just <laughs> look at the pictures. Dude, we know you're gay. Um, I'm going to make my first video and I'm going to be showing my stomach and I'm going to act like I don't give a damn about what anybody else has to say with my blonde hair, my black nails, showing my stomach, glittery from head to toe. Writer Sammy Namir Oliveras described Fret as being known for, quote, breaking gender norms and stigma about being gay, gender non-conforming, and expressing gender identity freely in a country where gay people are still mocked, bullied, and killed. Fret, uh, Fret, uh, Fret upends the... Fret upends the genre's paradigm of macho behavior and misogyny. Fred is also quoted as saying, quote, I'm a person that doesn't care what anybody has to say. Now I see young guys and young lesbians that are looking at me now like a role model. Like, wow, if I did it and he don't care what anybody else has to say, I can do it. 
Fret, though inspiring to an upcoming generation of LGBT youths, is not without fault. Like professing that being gay is a choice. That doesn't help everything. But also in Miami in 2018, Fret gets in a fight in an elevator with some rando guy who allegedly verbally attacked him for being gay. He throws a metal bottle at the guy and Fret gets charged with battery. Then Fret is targeted, but this time it's in a song. So Trapero, so a Trapero is like the music genre is called trap. Maybe you know this. I didn't. The music genre is called trap. So if you sing trap, you're a Trapero. It's kind of nice, right? It's, it's, it's kind of pretty. So Trapero Annuel AA. Now, I don't know. That's his name. Annuel AA. I don't know if it's Annuel, Annuel double A, like a battery, or, but I'm just going to call him because I don't want to say double A because then it's going to sound like Energizer batteries. So I'm just going to call him Annuel AA. So Trapero Annuel AA releases a disc track entitled Intocable. Um, the song has homophobic slurs and its pointed attacks at his former collaborator turned nemesis, Coscuela. The song implies a gay relationship between Coscuela and Fret. And the song is now banned. It was so bad that it's banned and Annuel AA has since apologized. Like, that, the song is so homophobic and so offensive Um you know, implying things about fret and stuff that it's been banned. And he apologized. But you know what? Apologizing? Fuck you. I'm sorry. But just because people apologize, I hate when people think that they can get away with anything because they apologize after. Like, I I, I was watching a show once and, and this woman was like trying to apologize. And she's like, I'm sorry. And the other one was like, okay, fine. And then she was like, "What? I'm apologizing here. Like, Like, the other one is just... Because you're apologizing, the other person has to just accept your apology. They don't. It doesn't erase what you said. Some things can't be erased. Some things can't be unheard. Some things can't be unsaid. And if you wrote a diss track and you released it and promoted it and people heard it, you have done the damage. And an apology is worth shit all. Nothing. So go fuck yourself. Before the song was taken down, Fret goes on social media to return fire on Annual AA because Fret, he does not take shit. Like this guy is vocal. He do not give a shit. Um, He returns fire on Annual and Urbano artists in general for their unchecked homophobia and asks them to stop using the LGBT community as their punching bag. So, things do not get a chance to settle down because Puerto Rican reggaeton star Uzuna alleges in a statement that he is being extorted by Kevin Fred. So, for all of the good work that Kevin is doing and for his uh, his activism and advocacy for the LGBTQ plus community, um, he's a flawed character because um, this extortion stuff is actually real. So... Ozuna goes public with a claim that Fret has a video of Ozuna filmed when he's only 16 years old, quote, doing something intimate alone. Ozuna says that Fret extorted him for $50,000 and Fret reportedly threatened Ozuna on different social media platforms that he would release the video, at which point Ozuna transfers the money into Fret's account. So Ozuna goes to the FBI offices in Miami to file a complaint against Fret after the alleged payments, and legal measures are taken because sending and publishing videos of minors and possessing them constitutes state and federal crimes. Ozuna's label and management office, Demillo V, sent a statement via his publicist saying Ozuna was extorted with an intimate video where he is a minor. This video was also edited in order to cause more damage. So all of that is building, is building, is building. And then on January 10th, 2019, Fret is riding his Yamaha motorcycle in Saturce, San Juan, which is a barrio of the municipality of San Juan in Puerto Rico. Um, at a very densely populated area at about 5.30 a.m. when an unidentified gunman shoots at him eight times, hitting him in the head and hip. Another man was reportedly seen with Fret at the scene but quickly flees on his own motorcycle. The incident was initially regarded by authorities as an automobile accident because of the darkness of the hour. Fret was taken to the Rio Piedras Medical Center where he was pronounced dead. Confirming his death, Fret's manager Eduardo Rodriguez said, quote, There are no words that describe the feeling we have and the pain that causes us to know that a person with so many dreams has to go. We must all unite in these difficult times and ask for much peace for our beloved Puerto Rico. 
There's no immediate indication of a motive, and an investigation begins. In the third month of investigation, Fret's mother, Hilda Rodriguez, reiterates her allegations against trap singer Ozuna and his manager, Vicente Savadera. She says that they ordered the death of her son. Both, but both men are never named as suspects by police. I know it was him, Ozuna, who ordered my son to be killed, together with Vicente Saavedra. Rodriguez said earlier this month, Ozuna carries this in his conscience. Fret's mom alleges that Fret did not extort Ozuna for money, but simply asked to be featured in one of his songs, and says the openly gay singer had an, quote, intimate relationship with Ozuna. The only thing my son asked of him was to help him sing as a featured artist on a song, Rodriguez said. Ozuna allegedly said, no, I'm not going to give you money, and I want you to send me the link so that I can erase the video, but my son wasn't the only person who had the video. Fret's death still remains unsolved. Ozuna has never been charged and recently made headlines after being a surprise guest during DJ Snake's Coachella Weekend 1 performance, along with Selena Gomez and Cardi B. So... Ozuna is going on and living his life. Everything is cool. Nobody's ever been charged. The case remains unsolved. And so ends the tragic story of an outspoken LGBTQ plus advocate and activist whose flame was snuffed out way too early. Kevin Frett, may you rest in power. This is just part of a larger problem. The violence and the gun violence that's happening in the U.S., but especially in Puerto Rico right now, is alarming. There's so much murder going on in Puerto Rico right now. And for Fret, I mean, the courage for Fret to step into an industry that is dominated by this toxic masculinity and this machismo and this homophobic, misogynistic world to step into that and have the balls to put yourself out there, not just as Ricky Martin gay. Like, Ricky Martin is gay. He's out of the closet, but he can pass. No problem. You know what I mean? This guy was like, I'm this kind of gay. And he's crop tops and makeup, and he's the type of gay that you can't ignore. And he was making noise. And he was vocal and he was taking risks and chances. I mean, it's a shame that his story ended so quickly because his impact could have been so big. But he just rubbed the wrong people. The, he, he was just pissing off the wrong people. These are people with money. These are people that are connected. These are people that have a lot to lose. I mean, their reputations are everything, these artists. So, you know, and you're completely outnumbered. So if you would like resources on where and how to contribute to LGBTQ plus causes, head over to the show notes of this podcast for some valuable links. My sources for this story were an article on bbc.com, eonline.com, billboard.com, newsweek.com, and rollingstone.com. If you enjoyed this content and you would like to support my work, head on over to the show notes where I have a Patreon link and you can become a patron of True Gay Crime. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you in the next episode of True Gay Crime, Just the Tip. If you enjoyed this podcast, make sure to find the True Gay Crime Facebook page and follow us on Instagram at True Gay Crime. And we'd love to hear from you. Do you have an LGBTQ crime story from your city? You can send your story to truegaycrime at gmail.com, and I'll share it on a future episode of the show. Did you know you can subscribe, rate, and review True Gay Crime on Apple Podcasts? It would mean everything to me if you did, because it helps me create content you like, and it lets Apple know to share it with more people. Thank you for listening. And remember, always look behind you, lock your doors, tell someone where you're going, and look out for each other. Why can't we all just get along?